It is gut check time for your 0-2 Denver Broncos as they begin a 10-day East Coast road trip that really is going to make or break and let us know a lot about what this Denver team is. Is this Denver team the team that Sean Payton and our owner and every single Denver Bronco touted as shocking the world? Or is this what the national media said was the worst team in football? I think that what Sean said about this team in the offseason is what we are about to start seeing. Uh, Do not forget how last season started. We lose a heartbreaking game by a missed field goal to the Oakland Vegas Raiders. Uh, We then somehow let the Washington Commanders come back and beat us and drop 38 points on us at home. And then we went to Tampa, Florida, uh, to Miami, Florida, and let the Miami Dolphins score 70 points on us. And you would think at that point our season is over. We are 0-3. Very few teams ever come back 0-3, and we go to Chicago, and in the fourth quarter being down uh, 10 points to the uh, Chicago Bears, we come back, and we end up being 1-4, and four. and from there, at one point when we are 1-5, and five, we rattle off five straight, and we are in the playoff hunt. And so I think the Denver Broncos are actually poised to shock the world still that everything that Sean Payton said about this team is going to come true, and I think they've got some actual fantastic news. Uh, Sean Payton himself has done everything he can to downplay us being 0-2. And I'm going to make the argument that I think this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that we're going to play on Sunday is actually the worst team of of the three that we've played so far. Um, And I think you'll see that in, in the playoffs, that I think Seattle is a fantastic team. And I think, obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers are a fantastic team. And I think we match up extremely well, especially with some of the injury news that they just released and the weaknesses of that team, which we're going to break down. But Sean Payton himself even said, we're, we don't know who this team is yet. We're Owen two with a brand new rookie quarterback, uh, with the fact that we know Sean Payton's offense is overly complicated and it takes a long time to learn, which is why we started off so slow last year. And once that offense was implemented, uh, it began clicking for us to go on that five-game uh, winning streak that we did and, and beat teams that a lot of people didn't think we would beat. So here is is some of the good news in addition to some of their injury news that I'll get to in just a second here. Uh, the first piece of really, really good news is that this defense is not nearly as scary as the Steelers, who have a Super Bowl-quality defense that we saw on full display last week, and the Seattle defense, which looks fantastic as well, and we didn't even have a chance to game plan for with a brand-new coordinator. Looking at this, uh, Dan Campbell himself, the coach of the Detroit Lions, came out and fell on his sword and said, we never should have lost that game. If you look at this, Jared Goff threw for 324 yards and they rushed for 139 yards. Um, Looking at their average run per game, obviously we don't have Jameer Gibbs um, or anyone of, you know, I don't think Jaleel is at that level. I think he, his ceiling might be close to a Jameer Gibbs floor and we could see that pop off. But you're talking about 470 yards of offense that you allowed against this team. Uh, And the week before, they're playing against a rookie quarterback, and you just look at the numbers that he was able to put up in 184 yards throwing, uh, and they let 138 yards rushing there. And so I think if you look at what the Tampa Bay defense struggles against, it's the run. What has Sean Payton said time and time again is a rookie's best friend? It is a running game, and that is what we need to get involved and just humming on Sunday. We've put all of our money in this offensive line. And I think that is is where we are going to start to see us making some real hay, making some real push, is that I think our running game is going to pick up. They have not been stout against the run, uh, and it is even worse for them as their biggest run stopper. Um, it has a sprained MCL and will miss this game. I'm not celebrating any injury, but this is a team that already struggled against the run, and now they, they are missing one of the best defensive linemen in the entire NFL. Uh, and they don't really have a pass rusher who should be scare, who should scare any of us. Bo Nix, the, the thing that he has done better than any quarterback that we have had under center in a long time is he's avoided getting sacks. Even some of the sack numbers that go against him are him falling out of bounds right at the marker, and it's like a loss of one versus not throwing Russell Wilson under the bus, but times when he would self-sack and lose 14, 15 yards, exactly what Caleb Williams is doing with the Chicago Bears. So already, this is not a pass rush to be scared about. Uh, They had Shaq Barrett, who was a former Bronco a couple years ago. They don't have him anymore. 
And so losing McGlinchey for the next four games is going to be rough, especially next week against the Jets. But this week, when you are already a, a struggling defensive line and now you are also down um, Vita Vea, I think that just plays perfectly for the Denver Broncos uh, to get the run going and uh, to not be worried about Bo Nix being under pressure and finally having some time and some breathing room. You go from having... Uh, the pass rush and guys coming from everywhere when we played Seattle. And then the next week to have TJ Watt against you to now playing against, I think he's going to finally have a chance to, to get his breath. And I think we're going to finally start to see some longer drives uh, established this week. Um, You know, a, as we talk about, um, we're going to talk about the defensive side of the ball here in a second, but as we talk about what can Sean Payton do to improve this offense, I think one of the very good signs that, that has me believing is that there are so many things going wrong on this offense, and that sounds very counterintuitive. Like, why would I be encouraged by so many things going wrong? Because if we just make incremental improvements in a couple of things, we are going to see those magnify in, in their importance and their overall change on this offense. It's not just like, hey, we're playing A-plus games on offense and we're still not good enough. We are doing so many things wrong that if we can just fix each one of those things just 1% this week, we're going to see our offense actually move the ball. And I think uh, Benjamin Albright did a great job of talking about those things, that it's a lot of different things. The first thing, we have all these different, uh, we're almost doing like hockey line changes and bringing in all these different personnel groups. And so then the guys don't know what they're coming into. And some people are blaming Dulcich's drops on the fact of, he's on the sideline like waiting for his number to be called and he's like in this weird package and he's not able to get any rhythm and Sean Payton called that out and said we need to take a good hard look this week about who we're asking to do what um, all those different weird uh, formations all coming on that's what's leading to some route confusion that we saw on Bo Nix's interception in the end zone was that you had a missed route uh, who was supposed to suck that defensive back up instead he was had no one there and so Cortland had had him in that area of the zone that he wasn't supposed to be in had the route been run correctly we're looking at the fact that we had a formation where you had Nate Adkins and Burton in your empty set where you got, you're supposed to have five like talented wide receivers out there. And we got two guys who aren't really even route runners in that uh, looking at how complex the system is. We showed the video the other day of Bo Nix getting the call uh, and in the huddle being like, Hey, let's hear it. And he's looking at his wristband and it's the length of a Harry Potter book. So by the time he gets to the line to read the defense, the, the, the snap, clock is already in the red on our TV. He's got five seconds to snap the ball and we're burning uh, little timeouts. We're looking at the fact that um, all, you know, that we were so predictable. I said we were going to beat the Steelers because we weren't going to be as predictable as the Atlanta Falcons were. And we were even more predictable that when we were under center, we ran the ball over 80% of the time. So if you're TJ Watt and that, that defense, you know, Hey, if Bo Nix is under center, we're running the ball when we need to be more like what the New Orleans Saints are doing to a loaded box, be under center and try calling a play action pass. How about that? And so I'm just saying, like, if we just make an incremental improvement of, of any of these things, we have a much easier defensive matchup this week to go against the Tampa Bay defense than we did against the um, uh, Seattle defense and certainly against the Steelers defense. Then when you look at the other side of the ball, I think we match up extremely well against this um Tampa Bay offense. So Baker Mayfield doesn't scare me. Um, I know he's played fairly well this year. We're going to look at a stat here in a second that shows he's really been bail bailed out by having talented wideouts, which I think would help Bo Nix a lot as well. But our defensive line is killer, you guys. Like uh, Jonathan Cooper alone has more sacks this year than Tampa Bay as a team does through two games. So that should be another reason you're excited. Tampa Bay has only had two sacks in two games against Jared Goff, who's kind of a statue quarterback there, uh, and against a rookie who you should be able to like get in his head and, and fake him out. And so Bo Nix is going to have time. And then you look at how Zach Allen is shaping up against some of these other elite pass rushers and defensive linemen, and he looks fantastic. Um, the, the Tampa Bay running game hasn't been anything to be scared about either. It actually looks very familiar to what we have had with um, Jaleel and Javante of just guys not being able to get going. So seeing uh, Rashad, Rashad White, their running back number one, uh, average 1.8 yards a carry. And I think our defensive line is way better than Detroit. Detroit obviously has Aiden Hutchinson, 
but uh, I think our run stuffing ability is going to be way better. I'm living in Michigan now, and all they talk about is how worried they are about their defense here. So their running game isn't going to be able to just milk the clock, and so I think we're going to lock down their run, and we're going to make Baker Mayfield throw. Obviously, he has two extremely talented wide receivers in Godwin and Mike Evans, but I think that's one of our areas of strength is our our cornerbacks, and so I think you put... Uh, you either keep Pat Sertan to just, you know, make Baker throw to the left side of the field and, and line Pat up on the right and he locks down whoever it is, or you have Pat Sertan follow Mike Evans and just shut him down and you trust Riley Moss with some safety help to lock down Godwin. And I feel very, very good about that matchup. So they have a struggling rushing. They struggle rushing the ball. That's an area of strength. We will stop the run we will ha- own the time of possession because I think our running game starts. One of the huge downsides of this game is obviously going to be going to the East Coast for that 11 a.m. game. That's always been the Broncos' Achilles heel. But Sean Payton spent the offseason studying how to do that better. Part of that is why we're staying over in Virginia after this game to then play the Jets uh, and not coming all the way back. He studied with Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan and with Sean McVay and asked him questions and picked their brains about how to do that. And I think we are going to learn a lot about this team. And I think the Denver Broncos are going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday. And we've got a ton to believe in.